Yes, we are freaking at the Freakers Ball right here live on RealLibertyMedia.com. The day after Thanksgiving, uh, more commonly known as Black Friday. Anyway, it is November 23rd, 2018, and we are live on RealLibertyMedia.com and on uh, Vaughn Live, Vaughn.Live slash Real Liberty Media. And on all of the audio streams as well. Those are the video streams I told you about. If you go to reallibertymedia.com and you look at the show page thing there, you'll see right underneath that is the Freakers Ball show page. I'm just telling you that in case you're listening on the audio stream, because if you're hearing it on the video stream, you know where you are. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, welcome to all y'all. And, and if you're listening on the audio stream, by the way, that I mentioned on rlmradio.xyz or on reallibertymedia.com, or on TuneIn and or on the Internet Radio or on RealLiberty.org or FreedomsNetwork.com uh, or or maybe you saw the link over there on 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 Minds.com or on Twitter.com. Yeah, all of the, all roads lead to Real Liberty Media. All Internet roads. We need what? We need what? 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 She's commanding me. Don't be commanding me while I'm starting the show. <laughs> Oh, there's that exorcist sound. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Hello? Oh, there you are. Okay. Cool. How's it going? Oh, it's going good. How are you doing? Good. Good, 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 good. Well, I was just saying hi, and let me finish saying hi to all those okay, people. Okay, yeah. All the peoples out there, I, I say I covered uh, our, our realliberty.org, freedomsnetwork.com, minds.com, twitter.com, and uh, of course the people on the audio stream uh, on rlmradio.xyz. Come on over, get on and jump on the video. Get in the chat if you're not in the chat. This is where it all happens right here in the chat. This is where all the great people are. This is where we got people like uh, the, the barman and uh, you and me, you and I, I and you, and Miss Kate and Asmodeus and Circle. And Chloe and Don, Carol and and Echelon and another Don, and Mister Mister Meister Meisterbrow, and the Poxophone Fides, and the Pone Sauce Pot, um, Rain and the, the Fluke, the Fluke Arlen Fluke, uh, Rob works and roams and uh, wait, did I say roams really? I guess not. Uh, roams and Vin E Vin E Vin so easily, um, and we got the Phantom and Colfax and Cyborg at Noodle. Dakota and Frumpy and Gromit and Java Doctor and JJJ's nine 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 JJJ's Kozu and Moe and Psych Puppet back with us once again and Skittle, not to be forgotten. <laughs> and that's all the people here in the chat. But there's other people out there around that I, I know listening that don't always decide to jump on into the chat. Well, we have such a great time, and you can make requests and talk about stuff we talk about and yep, you know, whatever. Just have a good old time. So, I hope everybody out there had a cool Thanksgiving and ate lots of good food and 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 took naps and watched football <laughs> or whatever the hell you do. Um, and and how was yours? It was good. Yeah. I uh, went to my brother's, had dinner there. Up in the city. Good. Yep. Yep. Cool. And so they came home, and it was nothing very uneventful. Good. That's good. Uneventful is good. The only thing I can say is people drive like freaking shit. Yes, they do. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, and that's a given anywhere, like, in the country you go. I mean, it's not like state-specific or city-specific or whatever, you know? Right. No, no. Everybody thinks their town's the worst and... Right. And they're all just but bad. People do drive like shit. Like, you're not supposed to pass on the right. So, like, I'm driving the left lane going, like, 79 or 78. Right. The speed limit's 70. And this lady comes up right on my ass in the left lane. And there's up in the right lane ahead of me, in the right lane, though, there's two semis, right? Yeah. So she thinks she's going to get in the right lane and pass me on the right in between the two semis and me, right? In the left lane. Okay. So what do I do? I just gunned it. 
I'm like, fuck you, lady. You don't pass in the fucking right. So I fucking gunned it so she couldn't fucking have enough room to fucking pass on the right, you know? Yeah. Then as soon as I passed the truck, I got in the right lane. That's how you're supposed to drive. You're supposed sure. to pass on the left, not on the right. Exactly. You know, she didn't even give me a chance. Like, she wanted to pass me, like, now. You know, she saw those two semis in the right lane. It's like, lady, what are you, what are you doing? She, you she, know? She was in a hurry. Her turkey was oh burning. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> I'm like, people, you don't know how to fucking drive. She, she didn't no. want to miss out on getting the wishbone. Oh, my God. I was like... <laughs> So anyway, it wasn't too bad coming back. There was when I was like right in the cities coming back, it was a little bit hairy. But once I got on the in was you know out of the cities and on the freeway, it wasn't as bad. But and I I saw no cop. I saw no cops at all. I I drove 90 miles there and back yesterday, and no cops. Which is really weird. I was, like, really shocked that I didn't see one freaking cop. Yeah, and uh, how, what was the road conditions? Oh, perfect. It oh. wasn't raining or snowing or anything. It was, it was like, 35 degrees out. Oh, that's good. Cool. Oh, yeah. It was it worked out good, except for the shitty drivers. Yeah, well, those are there no matter what but, they are. Oh, yeah. I mean, the biggest thing about driving, I've told my kids this, too. It's not just your driving. It's everybody else on the road that's driving, too. <laughs> or not. Yeah, you know? yep, yep, yep. A lot of times people are driving, but they're, like, doing anything but driving. They're, like, eating or on their phone or whatever. You know, it's like, really? Yeah, they're in their own you're little doing world. anything but driving, and you're driving a vehicle right now. That makes no sense, people. If you're nope. driving, that means you're driving. Pay attention to the damn road. Right. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, that's good. So anyway, so you you saw your brother and your what are they nephews, nieces? Uh, my nephew and nieces. Yeah. And uh. Dad, yeah. did you see dad? My dad. Yep. And my mom. Actually. Yeah, your your mom was actually there too. Well, she had to come up because her sister. Was in the is in the hospital, and, and so the they were they were all there in the same place. Yeah, through the years they've learned how to be in the same room. And that and that, and that bitch woman, my mom, my dad, and that that bitch woman that your dad. No, she to? was there, but she was she was actually well behaved yesterday. <laughs> Good. I was really surprised. So. All right, all right, cool. That's cool. I'm glad. Yeah, she was. So it went well. You know, I was only there like two and a half hours or something. You know? Yeah, but but then you got no leftovers. No, I didn't got no leftovers. But that's okay. I had I cooked a turkey two weeks ago. Two oh, weeks ago. All right, all right. Like I cool. cook, I like cooking turkey dinner. I don't. Have, I just you know some people are like really like weird. Like they only cook turkey on holidays. It's like. It is so easy to cook no, turkey. It's, it's a good, like, it's the a, turkey is the hard, the easiest part of the meal. By it, the way, it's a, it's an inexpensive meat, you know. Right. It's like I don't know why people don't eat it more. Why? I mean, I get it why they eat it on the holidays, but it's like you could eat it any time of the year. You sure. don't have to eat it only at Christmas and Easter or New Year's or Thanksgiving or whatever. Well, one, one thing is, uh, I, and maybe because of that or whatever, but the grocery stores don't carry them all the time. Well. Well, you can find turkeys all year long. Well, you can find not them as too. readily available, maybe, or not as many of them, but they have them in the stores all year long. All right, well, maybe there. <laughs> no, they do up here. The frozen ones, yeah. we don't, you can find a frozen turkey up here in July. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't July. think you can find them here all year. Yeah, you can. You just don't look for them in the, in the summer. <laughs> I don't really look for them at all. <laughs> but, oh, okay. <laughs> but they do have good deals this time of year on them. That's that's correct. And around yeah. Easter time, they have good deals on ham and turkey and, you know. But right. that's like one of my son's favorite meals is t turkey, so I cook it for him. And I have to cook the whole turkey because he likes white meat, I like dark meat, you know. Yeah, that works. that's perfect. Just the hockey breast itself won't work. 
Wait, wait, just watch it. I, I want, I, I was, I was looking at, I said hockey. I, I did not mean that. I meant turkey. I had hockey on my brain, so I was looking at a hockey website, and it was just like, really? Okay. And oh, I, wow. I'm not even drunk. Wait, wait. I, 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 I'm I not thought, at all yet. I thought you, I thought you said honky breast. No. Honky, like honky. A, 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 it's no. white meat. It's a white meat. That's a honky bread. The breast. high school team had a game, and um, I w- I've been texting my son the score. Like, it just got done. but So I, I, I shouldn't be distracted by hockey anymore tonight. But you know that. Well, all right. All right. Cool. So, sorry about <laughs> You know how it goes? You get something on your mind, and you... <laughs> Like, I was trying to multitask. That was an epic fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an epic fail at multitasking. And usually I kill it. Usually I kill multitasking. I mean, I am, like, a really good multitasker. But. That's cool. Fail. That's cool. Epic fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys anyway, talking in the in the chat there. They had ham. I, I had ham, too. Oh, I, did you? I bought, I, well, yeah, it was great. I bought this. It's a seven seven pound ham. Um, cool. But it's not like a regular ham. It's a, one of those Hormel things. It's kind of shaped like an egg. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's so okay. like a metal container. No, no, no metal. Oh, no, was it? Oh, okay. No, no. Oh, not they a. They used to put them in metal. Not a canned ham. No. Uh, oh, okay. It's, okay. It's, That's it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual real ham. Oh, okay. <laughs> but there's no Did bone. You? There's no bone in it. It's seven oh, pounds. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Okay. And, um, yeah. It, and it doesn't look that big, but man, it sure produces a lot of freaking meat. I'll be eating. Oh yeah, hams uh, have a lot of meat on. I'll, I'll be eating ham with, with no bone in it, especially. Um, right. So I'll be eating ham sandwiches for uh, a week. At least, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, ham is a good. It, it's good for you. It's not bad. You know what I mean? It's pretty elite, pretty lean meat. Really, pork is actually a really lean meat. It's the other Bacon. white meat. <laughs> Bacon might be more a little bit more fattening than the rest of the, the pig itself, but as far as pork goes, pork's generally really good for you. It's lean, very little fat on it. I mean, it, yeah. it's, it's yeah. good. It's good. And then, uh, I love ham, dude. Yeah, and you know, you know one, one other thing that I noted after mm-hmm. getting done with it was the, that boneless ham like that rather than a, 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 the, the regular... Full leg ham or or a turkey or even a chicken for that matter is yeah. the cleanup is so easy. Oh yeah, <laughs> There's no, you Much don't easier. have to deal with all that stuff, and you know you don't carve it really; you just slice it. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, to me it's it's it was, that's nice. That's kind of the way to go. Um, yeah, that's kind of cool. I like the real ham. So well, I it is a real ham. It. It's, it's, it's a real ham. It's well, a, yeah, but it's, is it, like, molded? No. I don't know how they okay. do it. I don't know how they do it. It's but. just the bone is out of it, is what you're saying. Yeah, and it's shaped like an egg. Okay. <laughs> a big so egg. Old, like, they process that. That's not, like... Well, but when you slice it, it just looks like ham, and it, and it tastes just like ham you would get okay, off of well, an egg. Then, I, I don't know. Yeah. What? Yeah, that's cool. No, it, it, it sounds so good. I, I don't, but don't, don't you know. usually, when you get a full ham, a ham with a bone? Yeah, ham, I you usually get the, you know, that leg or whatever it is that's got you the bone. You make soup. Yeah, usually. yeah, yeah. I do, I, I do, and I and, and I, uh, I've done that on many occasions. But this year I went with that's that. That's fine. No, it's, it's expensive it's, though. Whatever. It's, it's expensive. It's like twenty twenty six dollars for a seven pound ham. Yeah, ham can be expensive, um, <laughs> especially if you get a bigger one. You know. Yeah. But what I love is I like taking the ham and putting mashed potato mixing with mashed potatoes. Yeah, that tastes really good. <laughs> oh, I, I made a I made a uh, you know one of those big old yams. Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, they're good too. Do you use brown sugar on it or not? No, I just put butter and pepper on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good that way too. Yeah. And I just put it in the pan there with the with the with the ham and you know so it's two hours of cooking so it's nice and soft. Right, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so we both ate well on Thanksgiving. Yes, we yesterday. did. Okay. And everybody here in the in the chat seemed to eat well. I saw yeah. I saw a lot of people. Oh, I'm so full. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't. Yeah, ha ha, son puppet. 
I see I see your comment that you made in there. <laughs> I see that. that. I didn't miss that. Just let me know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, tater tots. I like tater tots. I like, I like tater my tots. My son loves tater tot hot dish, and so my other son hates it. And now the, the one son that loves it isn't living here anymore. But I need to make it. I'm just going to tell Matt tonight. I'm like, uh, dude, I'm making tater tot hot dish, and you can have something else. Tater, tater tot <laughs> what? What? Tater tot what? Tater tot hot dish. Hot dish? That's what we call it up here. We don't say casserole. We say hot dish. It's a it's a regional <laughs> thing, Graham. Don't don't you guys wait, call it casserole? Wait, I, I, wait, wait. So you put tater tots in a casserole? We call it hot dish, though. It, it's a casserole, but we call it hot dish. Yeah. Why? <laughs> it's a regional thing. No, no. But why do you put tater tots in in a Casserole. You've never heard of a... Well, you're thinking of a different kind of casserole, then. You're thinking uh, of something else. I guess. I don't know. I, okay, I like... So to me... I like uh, my tater tots just plain tater tots. No, no. What we do, what I do <laughs> to make tater tot hot dish casserole is you take a pound and a half or two pounds of ground beef and you put it bottom of the pan you take golden mushroom soup, two cans of golden mushroom soup, and put that on top of the ground beef. And then you can season it like however you want. Put garlic, pepper, whatever seasons you want. Right? And then you put your tater tots on top of that. Frozen. And you put it in the oven and bake it for like 45 minutes. Comes out. It's awesome. Shepherd's pie. It's not, no, because there's, well, it's the, the <laughs> potato part is... is yeah, tater, tater tater tots instead of mashed, but uh, right. she, that's shepherd's pie. <laughs> but no, it's a little bit different than shepherd's pie. Yeah, the shepherd pie has like beans in it. It can, it can. You can put beans or corn yeah. or whatever. And you can put beans in the tater tot hot dish too. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Layer mixed in, mixed in with the beans. ground beef. Yeah. My mom made it like that before. She put like green beans in there. Yeah. Like the, the sliced green beans, not the sliced, the French style. Yeah. So you can. Do variations on it. It's just so it's, it's yummy. <laughs> that, that golden suck. mushroom soup is really good for cooking. Oh yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah, All right. it's really let's, good let's, for a sauce. Here's some music. No. Oh, let's go to some jams here. Let's do that. Yeah, we got on the food tangent. We do that here on the Freakers. I know we do. Well, we're always like we're extra hungry here during the Freakers. Right. Yeah. We we like to, we're foodies at the Freakers Ball. <laughs> anyway, today today is Black Friday. Yeah, you know, okay, we'll talk about that later. We'll, we'll yeah, talk about that crazy. later. I did not participate, the same. I don't think anybody here did. So anyway, here you go, Black okay. Friday. All right, let's hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Devil Makes Three from Moose Girl there. Before that, we had Joe Bonamassa doing Evil is going on. From Muddy Wolf at Red Rocks. And we kicked it off with Steely Dan and Black Friday. Yep, Black Friday. That's today. For a little bit more. If you all do that kind of Black Friday type stuff. <laughs> Friday. I did not participate. And and what, looking at Facebook today and just looking at other, other sites today, it was like getting really sickening. Black Friday, Black Friday, Black Friday. It's like everyone does a Black Friday thing. <laughs> it's like, come on. You, you can't keep track of it all. And, you know, they make you think like you're getting such a good deal. that I. But you know what the thing is, is that tomorrow... Like, a lot of Black Friday sales now are not just one day, right? Yeah. Like, they're, the Black Friday special applies to the items basically until they run out of that item. Right. I mean, think about it, people. They, they, it, it, it's a scam, all right? It, it's a commercial, it's a capitalism, commercialism, capitalistic fucking scam 
to make you think, you know, because there was people that work today that didn't, that can't do Black Friday during the day, like in the morning. Like, they can't, they're going to work. They're not getting up at 6 a.m. to go to Menards, right? Yeah. For Black Friday. They're getting up to go to work that day, and they can't participate in Black Friday until later on, until after they get done with work. Right. And besides that, Black Friday started at Target last night. And at Kohl's. And other stores. It's like, so it doesn't really start, it starts at, it started for Target last night, like at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock they opened. 6 p.m. Yeah. And it, it, I'm sorry, I just, I used to think that it was like, oh yeah, you have to get stuff on Black Friday to get the best deal. That is not true. They want you to think that, but that is not the case. Oh, how they do, you know, it's, a lot of places they have Black November now, so <laughs> right, yeah. It's or like it's Black Friday all day, every day in November. Okay, right. well that's cool. And, and, and then then they have something else for December, and, and well, that's my point, Grim, is that then, then there's the you're gonna get that lowest price t today or tomorrow. You're gonna get that if they if Walmart still has those TVs that everybody's fighting over today. Yeah, they're gonna have them tomorrow too. Uh, and when you when you see these when you see them them bring the product in, they bring it out on the pallet, like on the pallet mover, they bring the pallet of these TVs, and they just let people go at it. It's like it's all for publicity. You know, they if if I was the Walmart manager or whatever, I'd be like, okay, this is the deal. <laughs> We're gonna line up here. And we're not going to have any fights. Or any wait, 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 you know, I, I I know there's a lot more snowflakes out there now than there used to be. And, oh, yeah. And they're very obvious. You can hear them whining all the time about stuff. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but, okay, so, I'd be like, we are not just bringing out this pallet and letting people go all ape shit over this stuff. And then right. people were, like, dropping the boxes. Like, it's a TV in there. Right. It's like, you don't want to drop the box on the floor, you dumbass. You know, exactly. you're going to fucking wreck the thing before you even fucking buy it. Uh-huh. It's like... <sighs> anyway, okay, here. Uh, and then they show you it's too late, and this might not be from this year. See, I don't believe any of these Black Friday videos. Unless, unless I have proof that it happened today, I don't believe... These could be from five years ago, these videos that they pull for people fighting on Black Friday. Right. So I don't trust any of these videos. Okay. But here's here's the the Daily Mail article on Black Friday. Um and I think like I said, you know, I think the Walmarts and the Targets and all that, especially Walmart, they want this shit. They sure want they do. people to see people fighting over their product on right. Black Friday because oh yeah, oh, they're yeah. so awesome. Hey, you gotta miss out on that. Yeah, you're going to miss out. We're, we're offering such great deal. It's like, come on, people. Like, you guys can see the Walmart I'm talking about. And I can tell it's a Walmart because I can, I can see a Walmart logo and everything in there. And it looks like a Walmart. Like, yeah. there's a video on there about where the TVs are, Grim, where yeah. they're showing all these people grabbing these. And it's not even a good brand. It's Hisense. Is that a good brand? I don't even know what brand that is. H i s e n s e. Yeah, I've heard of them. I, I don't know if like they had a pallet in the one video I saw. There was a pallet of Samsung sitting there. No one was touching. I'm like, you guys are clamoring over high sense when you got Samsung sitting right next to you. Whatever, you know. Right. But Samsung isn't that great of a company either. It turns out. I mean, all the and this. It's not just Samsung, but it's all the electronics companies. Um. Let me look up that article really, really quick. Uh, Rome's posted an article earlier about it today. I think it was Rome's. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, but all these women are getting sick. 
Let's see what we got here. I can hear the F word. What the hell, people? <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, I don't know. Are you one. kidding me? You guys are freaking insane. Oh, I was just playing there, Chloe. You heard me say that. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. This is uh, two women wrestle over pots and pans. Your phone in the fucking cold. 
it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it, it's laughable, truly. Oh, but something I don't know where that it is. is not laughable. It doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, there was uh, some guy who was on a tweet that I saw today. It yeah. says, uh, look at these mad Canadians rushing into into their, their <laughs> store for Black Friday. And, and and there's people waiting outside, and the guy goes right. from the inside. He goes and he opens the door. And these people yeah. just calmly walk again. Right, just all calmly. Being, like, being, being all nice and polite to each other. <laughs> no rioting, no trampoline, no major fucking push or something. So, you know, yeah, yeah. It's uh, like, this is why I do not participate. This is why, yeah, the, the, the difference between uh, Canadian Black Friday and the American assholes. <laughs> right, yeah. But anyway, I brought up Samsung. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you saw this, Grim, but you probably did if you saw it. I saw it on Twitter. I'm going to go into Twitter right now, by the way, just so I can be on there. Um, I'm getting more and more in Twitter just because it's really fast, you know? Yeah, yeah, well, that's a... Whatever happens, it's right on Twitter all the time, right away. But anyway, um, Samsung executive vows as he apologizes for sickness and death of factory workers after dozens of employees oh, suffered right. leukemia and brain tumors. And yeah. this is from uh, November 22nd, yesterday. Samsung Electronics has apologized for illness and deaths of some of its workers, saying it failed to create a safe working environment at its computer chip and display factory. The announcement by the South Korean technology giant came weeks after the company and a group representing ailing Samsung workers agreed to accept compensation terms suggested by a mediator and a, and, and a highly publicized standoff that went on for more than a decade. So right. this is not something new. Been going on for ten years. Sure, sure. Uh, you know these electronics have radioactive materials in them, correct? Uh, well, not necessarily, no. But I mean, some some do. That's my understanding. <laughs> they don't all. So I'm just saying, uh, I don't uh, trust any electronics. Uh, 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 it's not just Samsung. It's it's all of them, as far as I'm concerned. No. And it's not just Samsung, but they. Have, you know, yeah, that, this is bad. That that, they're, they're, that, that yeah. Apple company was was they they've been doing some bad stuff too. Their yeah. workers have been getting leukemia and brain tumors. That's not good, dude. Right. And it it is the uh, uh, it says Keenan Kim, president of Samsung's device solutions division, said the company failed to quote sufficiently manage health threats and its semiconductor and liquid crystal display manufacturing lines. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean... Yeah. Uh, well, is that place that uh, makes those Apple parts for the iPhone, and they had to put yeah. suicide nets up around the building? They had to what? They put suicide nets up around the building. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that's bad. And I think that's the same company that just opened one over there in uh, your state. Yeah. Oh, uh, shit, what's it called? Yeah, I can't remember either. Foxconn? Yeah, Foxconn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, think it's such a great deal. Oh, it's going to bring in jobs. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, but guess what? You might get a brain tumor. Oh, or, or. You know, <laughs> or get leukemia. So, yeah, you're going to work, but you could get terminally ill working here. So sign right up for these high-paying jobs, but if you get sick, all your money that you make is going to be going to them fucking doctors. Nice, huh? Right. It's like, fuck you. I'm not working <laughs> your toxic shit. Yeah, well, you know. I mean, I, I didn't even know about this. This is going on hey, for 10 years. Uh, pe people work in coal mines for years. and Right, right. You know, that and shit will kill you. Yeah, that, that that shit kills them, or or they work putting insulation in, and that right. fi fiberglass now it used to be asbestos gets into their lungs and. Well, like I was working uh, at that place. I think I told you I was working at that. Maybe I talked about this before, but I was working at that place that uses fiberglass, right? Yeah. And there's there's constant the particles are all once you cut that fiberglass the particles are so small and they go everywhere. You know, and it would get in your clothes. 
And it would, get, you know, when right. I left it, this sounds gross, but I would have, like, hard, it would be in my nose. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, it, and even working in the office, yeah, there was a, it was a separate room, but the furnace draw, drew in the air from the production floor. So what do you think the furnace is? The air in the, in the office even has that shit floating around in it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a very small office, very tiny. Right. And so I saw that they were hiring, and I'm like, you know what? No fucking way. No way will I work there. It's not good for your health. And the same lady that I worked for works there. And that was, I haven't worked there for five years. You know? Yeah. It's like, it's not good for you. And they do provide, like, masks and gloves and personal protection equipment. But, like, when you work in the office, like, to go to the bathroom, even, you have to walk through the production area to get to the bathroom. Yeah, I'm just walking. You no, know, so you're those. you're in it. You're out in it. Yeah, but you're just walking you're through. Breathing. What? You're just walking through. No, but the, the furnace grim. It's bringing that air into the production floor. Hmm. It's not fresh air from the outside. It's air from that production floor. Well, that's a design but issue. It's, a, it's an old building that they had to like remodel and make modern. You know, put modern things in there. Uh -huh. So they like improvise in a lot of ways. You know, it's a really. It used to be the the Bridgestone Tire Factory or, or the Firestone or whatever it was. Right. You know, and so and it's a huge building. So they've like broken it down into part. Of, you know, places that businesses, manufacturing companies, or whatever can rent. Because there's like five or six manufacturing companies in that one that huge complex. You know. Sure. But I will not work there. I knew when I worked there that it was not good for my health at all. Because with the, you can't see the particles, bro. They're so small, you can't no, even right. see it. I, I, you know? I know, I know. And over time, that stuff, if you breathe that in, it gets stuck in your lungs. Sure. That is not good. It's not good. <laughs> all these non-smokers that work there, they might as well be smoking. Uh, even, you know, I, I forget where this place. They're was. fucking up their lungs. What, I forget what place I was working at. But anyway, anyway, they they were using this stuff to clean the parts before they assembled them. Yeah. They, you know, the parts themselves weren't dangerous. Like a solvent or something. Yeah, MEK and. <laughs> oh my God! Doesn't sound good. Methyl ethyl ketone. Yeah, it's really nasty stuff. That can't be good. No, right. it's not good. And a lot of people they wouldn't weren't even like wearing gloves or nothing or breathers. Right, they were masked. They, no, 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 nothing. Just, just them sitting right. there. It's with like, the, do with you the, realize what you're doing to yourself? <laughs> with the rag, wiping this MEK, just pouring MEK on the rag and wiping oh, it on God. the parts, and and it's just like, yeah. Well, they weren't provided. You know, they, the the masks and gloves weren't provided. So, uh, you know, well, they they're provided they at this place, but. When you work in the office, you're fucked because you don't wear you don't really feel like you have to wear that personal protective equipment. But you really do because the furnace doesn't draw in fresh air from the outside, yeah. it draws air from the production floor, which has the fiberglass particles in it. Yeah. So, because it would get in my shirts and everything, Graham. Like, it embeds itself in, pull, in cloth, right? Sure. And, like, I could only wear certain clothes there. Those were my work clothes because those had the, sh the, the fiberglass particles in them. Because even washing the, the shit doesn't get it out. No. Totally. And it was, it's like, no way. It was so dirty there, it's like, no way will I ever fucking work there again. It's bad for your health. OSHA can come in there and cite them. Oh, shit. You know, I'm not going to call OSHA on them, but, you know, I, you know, I don't work there anymore. I don't, whatever, you know. Right, right. But it, it was, it's not a healthy environment. Yeah, yeah there's a lot, yeah. Lot, of, a lot of places like that. that are there is, and... I guess what they would need there is like a really expensive filtration system, which they could afford it, but it would be expensive, you know. Sure. At the same time, do you want people to work? But do you care about your fucking employees or not? No, no, you know? no, no. The employees are just—it's like a tool, you know. Sometimes you right. buy a tool, use it for a while, it breaks, you get a new one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so and the employees. Like, oh are... well, we, we've had people work here before. You can quit if you want, you know, we'll find someone else. Yeah, right. It's like, and, you know, most of the people that work on the production floor, they wear gloves, but they don't wear the, the, the masks. Yeah. It's like, how can you not, you know, because you're like, if you're standing over that stuff and you're cutting it with like an actual knife, like they use a tool that looks like a fucking bread knife to cut it. And once you cut that, then particles just fly into the air. Once they become airborne, 
you can't see them. They're so small, you know. That's what I'm saying. And same thing with chemicals. You don't realize the effect it's having on you right away, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's something that builds up over time. Sure, sure, sure. You know, and even working in the where I worked before, it's like a huge metal shed. Where there's no actual real walls or anything. You can hear everybody, and you can hear the sneezes and the coughing, and, the, and it's just like a germ fucking factory. I swear to God. You yeah. Know? Well, that's worse. Probably worse than germs, getting all that crap in your stuck in there, you know. Oh yeah, the fiberglass. Oh yeah. yeah, that's way worse to deal with because that's something that, like, I would I. I was like, I even told myself while I was working there before, like they they lost a contract, so they had to like eliminate my position. Mm-hmm. But now they must have more business, so they're hiring again for right. that position. But it's like I gotta get the fuck out of here. Like every time driving home, I worked there almost two years. And every time driving home, I'm like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Because you know that if you're getting hard boogers in your nose, <laughs> yeah. You know that are like hard and hard. Right. That was fi- fiberglass particles that I have breathed into the day, right? Fiber boogers. And then plus, you know, if it's getting in your clothing, that you're breathing it in. Sure. You know. Yeah. It's like this is not a healthy place to work. Fuck this place, you know? Right, right. Yeah, like you said, dealing with illness and cold and shit like that, that's different than dealing with something that can fucking kill you, you know? Right. Like it's, I'm sorry, but no job is worth that. No job is worth jeopardizing your health for. Right. I, I don't care what job it is. I mean, I get it. Firefighters... That might be a different scenario there, but other than that, no job is worth it. You know, je- jeopardizing your health. Because you know what's going to happen? You're going to work your fucking ass off at a place for a while, end up getting sick from working there, and then when you retire, you won't be able to, you'll be sick. Right. And you, you know, <laughs> and so you fucking work for nothing. Yeah. You know, that's so right, it's not worth it. Sure. No, I, I I understand. I agree. All right, let's play some more music. Okay, let's do that. And then we'll come back and talk about more things. Alrighty, <laughs> sounds good. All right, and this song, what a what a true statement. They are the clever. You've been watching Audio Tree Live. This has been an awesome session with Samantha Fish. Yes, an awesome session with Samantha Fish. Audio Tree Live there doing the American Dream. Yes, indeed. Casey thinks that's a pro-American song. Maybe you want to read the lyrics to that tune sometime. <laughs> you will find out differently. Anyway, uh, before that, we had Indigenous with Waiting for Mr. Sock a Puppet. And we kicked it off with... Your cash ain't nothing but trash by the Clovers for Kate for this Black Friday. Friday. Yeah. And um, you thought that was a Jay Giles song, didn't you? No. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I did not. Well, not that, not that, not that version, but uh, the, they do that song. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's Jay Giles does cash in the trash. I'm, pr- oh, I'm, fairly, I'm, fairly, so. I'm fairly sure. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, yesterday I wake up, you know, it's Thanksgiving, big deal, whatever, you know. Anyway, um, thanks, you know, I look at the, I, I log into my computer and I get out, I go and click on Daily Mail. And I see that Donald Trump gave thanks for himself. <laughs> and I'm like, who the fuck says that? <laughs> that guy. Who the fuck uh, is so egotistical that they're like, oh yeah, I'm the best dude. I give thanks to my fucking self. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, man. You know. Oh, I mean, I, I just, it just, you know, I don't give a fuck. Democrat, Republican, they all suck. Right, Rob? But really, the President of the United States said this, oh. and he, he gave thanks to the tremendous difference he's made in this country. It's like, what? Anyway, I, 
just thought that was disgusting. Um, the guy's an egotistical fucking maniac, obviously, and you uh, you basically have to be that in order to be in the po- in politi- politics, oh, political yeah. arena. You gotta be a fucking big old dickhead, basically. Oh, Even sure. if you're a woman, you gotta be a big old dickhead. You know? They all are. You gotta be able to talk shit, fucking smooth people. Smooth people and shit, you know. Get give people to get you money, give you money, you know. It is a big boys club though. It's a network of people, right? Right. Okay, if you guys, I don't know if you guys think about this a lot. I don't think about it a lot. I don't dwell on it. I just know it is. It's a fact that four percent of the world's population. Has the f- all the money. Controls it. Has it. Controls it. Makes the decisions. Those 4%, that 4% of people, that's who's running the fucking show. Sure. And you're fooling yourself if you think it's fucking different. Okay, out of the world population, 4%, those people can't be a big group, Grandpa. Well, I mean, it's not Compared a small the group. the rest of the fucking world? Right. It's, it's not a small group, but if you if you figure 4% of 7 billion, that's still right. a lot of people. Yeah, true. <laughs> right. You're, it's just not you and me. We're, we're not part right. of that 4%. I can't even think of numbers of billions. It's like, if someone <laughs> says someone's a billionaire, like, I can't even picture myself being a billionaire. Not I would never want to be a billionaire. You know what I mean? It's just not something that... You know, and you hear people talk, oh, oh, if I win the lottery, you know, people talk about money like it's going to fucking save their fucking life or change their life or something. It, you know, I'm sorry to say, but a human being has problems. Humans have some problems. Some humans have problems, and guess what? It doesn't matter how much fucking money you have. It, it, you're going to still have fucking problems. You know, it, it's just... The mentality of everyone, you know, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to win the lottery, and all my problems will be solved, or well, you know, I'm going to be a billionaire, I'm going to be a millionaire. So, you know, a, a millionaire, being a millionaire compared to the 4% that run the money, Yeah. a millionaire is nothing compared to these people. No, these no, 4%. no, but but, but yeah. speaking, speaking of the uh, winning the lottery and such, yeah. uh, here's a story from this morning. Indianapolis? Louisiana. Oh, okay. Louisiana couple finds older lottery ticket while cleaning for Thanksgiving. Oh, worth, cool. It's worth $1.8 million. So it That's says, nice. if you've been putting off tidying up the house, let this serve as incentive. Right. Harold and Tina Ehrenberg, a couple from Mandeville, Louisiana, were cleaning up for Thanksgiving guests when they found a lottery ticket they purchased months earlier. It turns wow. out to be worth $1.8 million. Nice. <laughs> Does we have family coming into town for Thanksgiving? I mean, so I, I think it's cool when people win the lottery, especially people that really need the money, you know? Yeah. To ease the, some hardship or whatever. But it's not going... It, it's a good thing, you know? But I'm just saying, it's just like... I can't, You know, when people say someone's a billionaire or... A, Three billionaire, three hundred billion, whatever the fuck. There's not that kind of amount of cash sitting around somewhere. It's not in the form of cash. It's the form of land or gold or silver or copper or whatever. It's not. There's not like billions of dollars of cash sitting around somewhere. Well, here, here, listen to this part. So, Don't you agree, though, Grim? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Here, listen to this okay. part. Says so it's a good thing the couple found the ticket when they did. The drawing was June 6th. Theirs was, wow. the only, theirs was the only winning ticket. Had they waited two more weeks, they'd have it gotten zip. The window to claim the prize is 180 days would have closed. Oh. Uh, she, she said, I, I, I called the winning numbers hotline over and over. Sweet. <laughs> uh, uh, added Harold Edberg. We, we kept checking the numbers again and again. Anyway, after taxes, the 1.8 turned out to be 1.2 million. 
which they plan to put toward retirement. See, they're in the retirement age, so they're older. Settle down there, Noodles. Um, well, that's good. Well, I don't know. It doesn't say how old they are, but they don't look young, but they are not. They don't look old either. They're probably 50s. Okay. In their 50s. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Um, no, good for them. That's great. Yeah, so, I mean, it's not all bad winning the lotto. Right, no, I get that, but what I'm saying, though, Graham, is it, it's just people are weird about money, and they don't think about it like they they should. Like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think these two will do all right with that, though. They're not they're not kids, and they're right. going to just blow it all. They're just, I mean, it'll um, help them all, for sure. You yeah, know? Oh, yeah. As long as they don't go all hog wild and buy like, cars and shit, you know, and stuff. You know what I mean? No, I think they seem to be fairly grounded folk. Yeah, well, no, that's good, then. That's the kind of people that should win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I'm saying. I, I do, I do, I do. So, but it, it's just like I learned when I learned about like the fiat system and everything. Yeah. I was like totally disillusioned with the, the money thing. You know what I mean? I was like totally like over it. Like, okay, I get it. Like, yeah. You know, I I'm not that materialistic of a person, really. You know, like I just don't think I am. I mean, I don't require, like, designer clothes or makeup or you know, whatever. You no, know, but, sunglasses. but, I mean, come on now. I, it's, I, let's, you know what? The but, worst thing I could do is spend, like, $100 on sunglasses because I they break or you lose them. You know? And if you spend $100 on sunglasses, that's just nuts. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, you know, if you get your... Five, I mean, your your like, your four dollar four dollar ones at Walmart, you know. You get your four dollar sunglasses. Or at the dollar store. Yeah. Right. I mean, you don't need to spend a hundred dollars on freaking sunglasses because you know how easy even if they're Ray Bans, they're not indestructible. Go get you know? yourself some I mean, cheap if sunglasses. You set your Ray Bans down on a counter and walk away. Someone's the next person that comes up and finds them, it's gonna take them. You right. Know? And there's your hundred bucks. No, but let's <laughs> come on now. If if somebody somebody handed you a million dollars or whatever, tax free, there it is. Here's your million dollars. Um, you wouldn't say no. Yeah. I mean, you can I, spend as much fucking money as you want to on sunglasses. I'm just saying, for me, I'm not gonna spend a hundred dollars on Ray Bans or whatever. Because it's, they're so easily lost or broken that it just does, it seems like too much money to spend. For I could even have them for one day, and the next day I drop them on the floor and don't know when I step on them. There's a hundred bucks. I got my I got my I don't know what they were. If I step on a ten dollar pair of sunglasses, I'm gonna be like, okay, I'll just go get another ten dollar pair of sunglasses. You know. <laughs> You know, yeah, or four dollars, yeah. or six dollars, or whatever. Right. No right. way am I spending money on designer fucking sunglasses that are made pretty much the same. They're not made better. They're not indestructible. They're, if you step on a pair of sunglasses, I don't care if you got them at the dollar store or if they're Ray Ban. You step on a pair of sunglasses, they're done. They're broke. Well, that's fine. You want to spend that kind of money on Ray Ban? Go for it. I'm, I'm not judging you. I don't give a fuck how much you spend on your sunglasses. Why would I care about that? I'm just saying, for me, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get spending that much money on fucking sunglasses. Yeah, I you mean, know, they're you so know. easily lost or stolen or broken that, to me, spending $100 and you have to protect them like they're goddamn cold, you know, so you don't lose them and you got to be so worried about your goddamn sunglasses. Of course, of course. You, you think about people spending, whatever, 100 200 bucks on a pair of sunglasses. And then, but of course they spend what seven, eight hundred bucks on a freaking uh, cell phone. Yeah, right. And, it, and it's, it's just like, what are, what are you out of your mind? Mentality. <laughs> same mentality there for sure. Are you out of your fucking mind? But, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about it. I I talked about it. You know, you know, I don't care who you are. You've broken a pair of fucking sunglasses. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, last time I was in, uh, in I was your out lifetime, and... you've broken a pair of fucking, or you lost a pair of sunglasses. It's it's just like a fucking lighter. 
know, yeah. well, you've lost the lighter in your lifetime. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you've used a lighter ever, you know, yeah. well, it, will it doesn't let... make a difference who spends what on, <laughs> on what. I'm just saying the point is, why would you, you know, uh, never mind. You don't get it. You just want to argue. That's great. Argue all you want, but. <laughs> anyway, last time I, I was out at uh, Laughlin. And, and I'm and I'm, and, and I'm packing up to go, putting all my stuff in the trunk there, and, and I and I set my sunglasses down on there on the on the rim of the trunk. Yeah, yep. And I closed the fucking. Yeah, right on the sunglasses. On the right? thing, and it, it broke, and I didn't have any more sunglasses. I had to drive home, so I had to go back into the casino there, and, and I spent like fifteen bucks on a pair of sunglasses. Right, and that's that what was, I do. Uh, that's I fucking what, that's cheapy sunglasses because I know. My history and my luck with sunglasses. Maybe I'm just a fucking freak yeah, of nature. Yeah, but either way, have, either way, that's, that's that, sunglasses. I that, don't know. That was that was like seven or eight years ago, and I right. still have those sunglasses. I that's uh, that's my sunglasses. You mean it didn't break? No, no, no. <laughs> you didn't listen oh, to me. I said right. I had to go into the casino and buy another pair of sunglasses okay, to drive okay. home with. So those are last. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, Sorry, uh, I was looking at the chat room. You know. I know. <laughs> I was distracted, but anyway, um, it, it, I I hear what you're saying, but I buy the cheapy ones because they're not really the Ray Bans aren't that much better than the cheapy ones. So no, it's like well, as long it. as you get polarized lenses, it's no. So then I don't feel you know, bad. Like whatever. if I had Ray Bans and I busted them or lost them, yeah. I'd feel like crap. I'd be like, well, there goes a hundred fucking dollars, you know? Right. <laughs> like, if I break a ten dollar pair, I'm like, ah, oh, that's no big deal. Let's go get another ten dollar pair, you know. Like, uh, right, right. But I don't feel so bad, you know. Sure. <laughs> about myself, which it's all about yourself, you know. Yeah. It's all about feeling good about yourself. Okay. Well, they try to tell you that it's not. You know, it's not about you. It's about everybody making everybody else feel good. That's bullshit. It's about making yourself feel good. That's what life is about. I'll bet you do. I'll bet you there's all kinds of sunglasses and other cool stuff down there oh, under God, the pier. There's tons of sunglasses out there. Whatever. <laughs> sunglasses isn't the, isn't the issue. I mean, that was the subject that we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how we got there. Uh, anyway. We got there talking about money. The fake money system. Yeah. Fiat currency. But, um... It's just, you know, I've just learned that I'm not, if, if I were to spend a hundred dollars on sunglasses, I'd like treat them like they were gold, and if I lost them or something or misplaced them, I'd be bombing. I'd be like, that's a hundred fucking dollar. If I break a ten dollar pair, I don't care. Yeah, I know. I understand. So, but yeah. you must be pretty good at your sunglasses. I mean, you must have to wear sunglasses all year long. Like, I have to go in Wisconsin. Right. So I, ha I mean, the snow gets really bright. Sure. And you have to wear sunglasses all year long. Like if it's just, if it's if it's cloudy out, it's fine. But if there's snow on the ground and it's super sunny out, it's super bright, dude. You you have to have sunglasses. <laughs> no, I I have to wear sunglasses whenever I go outside, cloudy or not. Um, right. Well, I wear I, them when my, it's my, cloudy, my, my when eyes are very sensitive too. to light. Yeah. Yeah, my, yeah my, me too. Yeah, I am. So. My eyes are very sensitive to light. Anyway. Very anyway, much. here, check out this. Check this, uh, and I, I, I shared this uh, somewhere a couple plays the other day, and Grammy talked about it on her show. But okay. I wanted to talk about this a little bit. All right. See what you think. All right. <laughs> uh, from uh, Russia Today, RT.com, mm -hmm. Moscow legislator proposes to blacklist phony wizards. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, that is so, from the headline. So, That's so, funny. So, that sounds funny. So apparently, they have real wizards. That's what they're saying, and they're going to legislate it so that real wizards, legit warlocks, <laughs> okay. will be able to do what they do. Uh, the Moscow city legislator has come up with an idea to create a publicly available blacklist of phony wizards. While legit warlocks should get together and form a trade union of sorts, 
<laughs> so quite out, <laughs> quite outstanding initiative has been floated by quite outstanding has been floated by the deputy uh, with the Moscow City Duma, uh, whoever this guy's name is, a professional association of them mages. They call them mages there. Um, should emerge to tell people from fraudsters it will publish such a data on a website as other communities do. Paliv told Moskova news agency on Tuesday citing existing unions of sports enthusiasts and quest game organizers. <coughs> but you're not talking about about sports enthusiasts or quest. No, you're not. talking about phony wizards versus phony wizards. real wizards. Okay. Real, real wizards. So there is there is what's the like. Is there a test to determine who's real and who's phony? Like, well, you know. All right. Um, <laughs> the, the, the guy who's done this says, I believe that there are many warlocks, mages, wizards, and parapsychologists. Well, I'm sure there's some parapsychologists. Well, yeah. Yeah. In Moscow, a professional association is needed. It remained unclear exactly how the legislator would tell legit from phony uh, ones that uh, uh, <laughs> created an association in the first place. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's just out there. That's, like, out there. I don't... <laughs> but apparently some of the uh, wizards are, are quite upset over the idea that... Oh, that, I'm sure. That, ...that they're going to be asked to perform whatever trick or whatever to get into the union? I guess. <laughs> the wizard union. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> it says, it says, prov providing magic, providing <laughs> magic, <laughs> providing magic services is profitable. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly preying on desperate people. Uh, back in August, yes. for example, a, a woman from Moscow region filed a complaint to law enforcement that she had paid a wizard the sum of 5.8 million rubles, about 90 grand uh, U.S. dollars, to wow. cure her husband's cancer. Well, the man oh, purported gee. to be a he purported to be a hereditary warlock in the 12th generation. His treatment, unsurprisingly, had no effect. <laughs> Didn't <it> work. <laughs> Darn it. Well, that had one effect. Uh, it was that you were out ninety grand. <laughs> ninety grand. Yeah. Wow. So. Okay. Uh, well, I can kind of see the need for like the Brotherhood of the Federation or whatever they call it, the Gandalf Brotherhood of the Wizard well, Federation. Uh, apparently, the guy said he believes in them, so. I believe it. I mean, I believe in some of it, but I also believe that we all have the power. We just aren't in touch with it. Like we all have the ability to be "quote unquote" wizards. Abra freaking cadabra, man! Abra cadabra, I want to reach out and grab you. Oh, I bet Gandalf is gonna sue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some tunes. We got some tunes. We got we got some tunes here to play. <laughs> Thanks, Saki. Oh, You're awesome. God. <laughs> You're awesome, buddy. <laughs> and from the request, um, not the original <laughs> request, which was Moose Girl, but the re-request, which was Kate, this is a perfect song for Black Friday. I'd like to do a song of great social and political import. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's some nice stuff right there, let me tell you. Joe Bonamassa, Dusty Hill, Derek Trucks, and Billy Gibbons doing Going Down. Yes, indeed. Before that, for the Moose Girl, we had the Zach Brown Band in Midnight Rider with Greg Allman sitting in. And we kicked it off there with Janis Joplin doing Mercedes Benz for Miss Kate and Miss Moose Girl. So, good stuff there, in my personal opinion. Hope you all enjoyed it. 
Yeah, that uh, was good stuff. Yeah. I thought something was really leery about the Zach Brown band one, but I'm like, no, it's good. Greg Almond's in it. These boys can bring it. They can play the Almond Brothers, Southern Rock. They're sure. musicians, so I wouldn't request it if it was too country, because Grim wouldn't even play it if it was. <laughs> like any other Zach Brown band I would request, he won't play it. Well, I don't know if I would no, or not. Because, he doesn't, you know, it's country, you know, which I get it, you know. Me and Grim have pretty much the same musical taste, but we differ in a little bit of some areas, but not too far. Like, we're pretty much common ground. So, yep. Yep. I think so, anyway. I mean, Probably. Yeah. Because we both love the blues. I mean, that's that's the biggest one right there. We both love the blues, so. Right there, you know, we're good. Well, the blues, that's that's real music, you know. Yeah, that's that's Americana, that's fucking the birth of rock and roll. If it for the blues, we wouldn't have rock and roll, people. That's right. Just remember that. Like, don't forget that. Blues you know? is your roots. Right. The blues is where it's at. Blues is where it started. There you go. Anyway, what else is going on? <laughs> You know, I look at, it's just so depressing sometimes that I have to, like, sometimes just, like, stop reading about the same story. I can't read the same story over and over again. Like, especially with really sad and depressing. Uh-huh. You know, it's like... Well, here, try try try, you know, try this out. See, 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 what you, see what you think of this here. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to try and put some on the screen here in a minute, but... All right. Uh, let's see. It says... The Robotic Hotel Room on Wheels. Oh, I saw that today. Yeah, I, <laughs> I looked at that one today. Is this the, fu- is? Is this the mm-hmm. future of travel? Self-driving suite can ferry guests from place to place, and drones deliver room service through the sunroof. <laughs> yeah. And the guy <laughs> wants to put up, like, ports where you can park them. Like, you just, it's like a parking ramp, but you just pull a vehicle in there and just, like, plug it in or whatever yeah. to recharge it. It's just, it's you the, stay in that thing. You don't get out. But then he wants to have, like, rest, like a regular hotel. Uh-huh. Except, like, you, you know, you transport, you, you ride these things to get to it and it has these ports. When you get to the hotel, it has ports you can pull into. You know what I'm saying? You don't actually leave your, the vehicle. You, you sleep in there and everything, you right, know? Right, right, right. It says it's, and shower it's, and shit and everything. <laughs> Says it's the world's poshest taxi, a glimpse yeah. of a glimpse into the future of traveling. Toronto Brace based Aprili Design Studio has designed a hotel suite housed within a self driving vehicle, which means travelers could journey through the night after simply telling the robotic suite where they'd like to go. Uh renderings reveal how the battery powered hotel room on wheels includes panoramic windows a double bed, a desk area, a shower, and a retractable sunroof where, where room service can be dropped off via drones. Um, uh, stop this. Why do they always do that? They always try and start these stupid little videos for me. Um, let's, see, let's see if we can get this on the screen here. Yeah, I hate that. Okay. Yeah, they do that. Okay, now, now look at this thing here. Um, it's pretty okay. cool. Uh, you got your oh, dad. Yeah, I saw the thing. picture today. Okay. Yeah, now, now cool. here's my here's here's my question. Yeah. Are there curtains? Right. Exactly. <laughs> there has to be. I mean, or shields that come up to like block out the sunlight. Because I mean, something. well, in that little pot where the bed is, I bet there's doors that come down. You know what I mean? The sleeping area probably is dark room. I, I'd, want, I'd want the whole thing to be curtained off if I wanted right. it to. Yeah, if you're going to walk around in your underwear, you don't want people seeing that, you know? <laughs> I mean, when you go from your bed to your shower, you don't want people seeing you walking around your your boxers or whatever. They and, want and, and here you got to say... Or you're not even boxers. No underwear at all. Yeah, I mean, just walk around naked like you do at home. Right. Anyway, yeah. so here you got to see a picture of the the, the the drones flat on in to bring right. you whatever room service what, whatever you whatever. want there and uh so, so. there's so you're not even driving as you can see the woman in the picture is on her fucking laptop yep she's sitting back there she's not driving she's this kicking back vehicle. over here she's just sitting back going you know transporting like a bus like a personal bus basically right with a toilet and a shower and everything and here's the side view 
I was, I was know, saying, and I, I don't see no curtains or nothing. I mean, it looks like... No, but, no, there's just something that comes down, Graham. I'm saying there's like a thing that drops down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there's I a guess. thing that drops down here to block it, so it makes the, the sleeping chamber dark. You know what I mean? There must be like shades, automatic shades that come down here. I, I, you know? I would hope so. But yeah. I would hope so, too, because, yeah, got, that's got got good, cause especially, in, you know, if you're sitting that thing in the fucking desert, it's going to be hot as hell. There's no fucking window covering. Oh, yeah, you're in a fucking fishbowl there, yeah. Yeah, you're going to be fucking, like, a, in an oven. <laughs> anyway, Which it's pretty I'm sure neat. I kind of I, 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 I I I like the idea. It, 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 it is. I kind of like it. You know, unless the thing drives you into a lake or something, you know. And right, yeah. You know, oops, the GPS malfunctioned. <laughs> <laughs> we had a glitch in the system, and the GPS, you know, fucked up. So, yeah, you ended up in a lake. <laughs> yeah. But you would hope that the thing, if it ends up in water, it has, like, things that, like, you know, like a plane does. It has those things that come out, you know, the inflatables or whatever. You would, you know, that's what I would incorporate into it. You know, I'd be like, we need something. If this vehicle goes in water, there's going to be an escape route, you know. <laughs> right. Or something that keeps it afloat so it doesn't sink. Or drives out in front of a train or a bus or something. Right, yeah. Is this thing indestructible, too, <laughs> as well as, you know. But Oops, <laughs> well, we, we, the, the GPS malfunctioned, and we thought the train had already passed. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's 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 weird because you have to trust technology so much, and we all of us have owned computers for so long that we know what happens when like there's a virus or a glitch of some sort, or you click the wrong thing, it can send your fucking system all wonky. You know, right? <laughs> it, 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 that can happen with these things. You know, I I don't think I'll trust these things until they've been around for like twenty years or something. You know, <laughs> exactly. Where they can work out all the bugs and everything. I don't want to be the guinea pig. Yeah, no, I'm going to try to avoid that. And, and this other thing I found today, and it, it, it looks, I like it. I, I posted this in the chat earlier. And, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have one of these normally in my yard, but uh, I, I think I could do with one of these. You see that there on the screen there? Oh, is, is it coming yeah, up yet? Oh, there it is. Click. Okay, there click. it is. Okay. Oh my sister. Okay, yeah, yeah, a gnome. It's a gnome. It's a zombie garden gnome. Zombie a garden gnome. Zombie garden gnome. Okay, yeah. it's not just a gnome. <laughs> it's a zombie gnome. Zombie garden gnomes. Apocalypse in your garden. Yes. <laughs> I, actually, that's actually better almost than the regular little cutesy gnome. Oh hell yeah! Like I that said, I wouldn't have. Like, w- what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have one of those stupid little, you know, gnomes. But these, these are all right. Zombie, zombie garden gnomes. <laughs> yeah, Zar- garden zombie. I was like garden go. I can talk. Here's anyway, one, um, here's no, one, those, here's one. the look eyes are trippy though. Look at like, this. I'd have to draw eyeballs on them. Like, well, zombies. You know, they, they don't need, here's one eating brains right. right there. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's oh yeah. Good. Yeah, those are cool. <laughs> those are cool. So, so yeah, they those gotta, are they different. I like them. We got a bunch of different models of, of uh, various zombies. <laughs> you can make your own zombie gnome horde. Zombie gnomes. I love it. <laughs> that one's got yellow eyes. There's one that's got yellow eyes. Yellow? Oh, yeah, he has. Yeah. He's, he's been out there. <laughs> there's a woman one now. It's yeah, the oh, first yeah. woman one I've seen. Yeah, there's a, there's a leprechaun zombie gnome. Leprechaun? <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be scary as hell. That could, like, give you nightmares. He's got, he's got that a, thing could give you nightmares right there. He's got a little he's shamrock right, right there. The <laughs> that thing will haunt your dreams. Here's one. Oh, with yeah, Meister, you know it. We're all fucking middle-aged fucking kinky motherfuckers. <laughs> Here's one with his legs chewed <laughs> off. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that, that'd be great to have a whole yeah, set of... The, the leg one is gruesome, Graham. I mean, that is bad. That's bad. That's like, okay. 
Oh, they're they're all pretty gruesome. I mean, oh know. yeah, they are. But the one with the legs and the bones exposed, and yeah, it's like oh, I I watched Walking Dead too much. Maybe that's why I'm like that one. <laughs> borderline, but all the rest of them are really cool. Uh, you know, they're cool. They would definitely attract attention. Yeah, they'd be like something you'd want to put out during Halloween, you know, or Easter. <laughs> Happy Zombie Jesus Day. <laughs> That's yeah. I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, it doesn't say how much they cost, but you can buy them at Etsy. So somebody's probably just okay, making them. Okay, well, someone's making those and has a sense of humor, obviously. Yeah, or you know, they just love zombies. Which I love that. That's like my biggest attraction. Is if someone can make me laugh, that is like a it's up there in the top five of attractiveness to other people. Humor. Oh, fifty. It, just, You're what? so old, Meister Brow. Too old for what? I don't know. I'm too old for water skiing and fucking downhill skiing. <laughs> Not too old for cross country though. No. So I'm still good. I'm not going to wood here. Now, I posted this link in the chat earlier, but I'm going to share it with you just because I think it's a good story. And I, I don't know. I haven't bought weed in a while, but how much do you pay for weed? To me, middle age is 50, dude. How, how much do you pay for weed? Uh, 40 bucks for eight, 60 for a fucking quarter. Sixty for a quarter. Yep. So that's about what nine dollars a gram. Yeah, seven grams, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but middle age would be forty. I mean, what are you gonna live to? What are you gonna live? What are you gonna live to? I feel like I'm ten years behind my age. So I feel like I'm 41, even though I'm 51. Are, are and people gotta, even, like, get surprised. Like, I'm not bragging right now, but people, I tell people I'm 51, sometimes they're fucking shocked. Are you, are you going to live to 100? Like, really? You're 51? I'm like, yeah, I'm 51. I'm not going to say I'm older than I am, for Christ's sake. I'm a woman. <laughs> How would a woman lie? If a woman's going to lie about their age, they're going to say they're younger than are you gonna but to I'm a, not going to lie about my age because I don't give a fuck. It's like, fuck it, you know? I'm not going to lie about something like that. No, I'm just saying, are, are you going to live to 100? No, I don't want to. <laughs> so, if you if you figure you're going to live, most people... Okay, I hear what you're saying. It's like 40 is middle age because if you live till 80, middle, Chloe, 40 is halfway till 80. Chloe is saying middle age is 45 to 65. Well, if okay. you live... From 90 to 130, I guess that's middle age. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too many 130-year-olds. I mean, oh. no, I don't. I know someone that's going to be 100, but she's, like, in la-la land. She's got dementia. She's, like, I mean, she doesn't know where the fuck she is or what year it is or anything. It's like, I don't want to fucking be like that. Yeah. I don't want to be like that, where I have stains on my clothes and I don't have any control over any of that. I just, I don't want to be like that. That's right, Chloe. I forget. You're only 116. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, it's, uh, here it is. Oregon marijuana prices drop 50 percent and sales soar. Cool. So, uh, apparently, um, uh, rampant overproduction in Oregon's market for legal recreational marijuana has produced a 50% drop in prices, according to state Sweet. economists. That, I think they to Oregon. That widely documented collapse, they call that a collapse, has been tough on farmers and retailers, but a boon for consumers. Uh, how is it a collapse if they're, make, if they're producing so much? Then whatever. Anyway, um, uh, let's get down to the nitty-gritty down here where it says, okay, a state study, study found the retail cost of a gram for marijuana plunged from $14 in 2015 uh, to $7 last year. So it's still 50 bucks uh, for a quarter there. So it's just getting down to the, the price where no, they, they, they can compete with the black market. 
which right. is why... Right, it takes a quarter, 40 and 8, or sometimes it's 30 and Yeah, eight. this would be, yeah. at, seven, at $7 a gram, that'd be, that'd be 40, yeah, right. $49 Let's a quarter. But they, they were charging 100 bucks a quarter before that. Yeah, see that? They're making 40 bucks profit then. Well, no, they're, they're ripping people off. Right, um, a.k.a. ripping people off. Yeah, uh, and so there's a 17% sales tax on weed there, um, and marijuana okay. taxes generated nearly $70 million in revenue last year, and right. $90 million in 2018. Revenue, I mean. Yeah. So, so and, I mean, in, right. order, in order to compete with the black market, they're going to have to stay around that $7 price. Okay, so here's an issue I, that came up recently with me what well, was someone I know is that they are able to get medical marijuana in a medical marijuana legal state but their job drug test right so they can't do it well what what is their job to me, there should be a loophole there should be like if you're able to get a prescription from a doctor for medical marijuana you should be exempt from that part of the drug test. You know, if you need it to control pain to make your life better, then you should be able to still work and not have to be drug tested because you have a prescription from a doctor that says you're able to be on it. Just like um, Valium. See, that's the problem I have with drug tests. If they're not tr testing for opioids and prescription drugs, the, the main reason that drug tests exist is weed. Right. Because it's the e so easily detectable. But yet now we have a problem. We got a guy that works in a medical marijuana legal state with the company drug test. So he's in pain. So they'd rather have him be on opioids and narcotics than on weed because they drug test. This is fucked up, dude. This is backwards. This is a problem here. You hear what I'm saying, Greg? I, I do, I do. They, they don't want you to... Yeah, the doctor says you need this to deal with your pain so you don't have to be an addict on narcotics, but yet you can't do it because your 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 job tests for marijuana. Well, but see, to me, if it's a medical legal state, you should be able to be exempt from that test. You see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying, you but... You should be able to be exempt from that because, hey, it's legal. This came from a doctor. This isn't just me being a stoner. This is what I need to deal with my pain. You know, it's fucked up. This is, I knew there'd be, we knew there would be problems like this, bro, when we, when we started talking well, about legalization. Here, here, here's, 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 here's the way they think. They, right. them. Synthetic THC is safer than actual weed. No, it is not. Of we know that. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. Let me finish my statement. Oh, my God. Let me finish my statement. Synthetic Sorry. THC is safer than actual weed. See, I can't help it. When I hear nonsense, I can't help it. <laughs> you're, not let me, no. you're not letting me finish my statement. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> Synthetic THC is safer than actual weed. According to the DEA. Of course it is, according to them. <laughs> according Murderers. to the DEA. Okay. Yeah, so here it Thank is. You. The DEA has sorry, officially... Sorry to fucking interrupt you. Sorry. <laughs> the DEA has officially decided that See, a, no, no, is, yeah. a notorious fentanyl manufacturer's synthetic marijuana product is... Safer than medically viable, and more medically viable than actual weed. Uh, in an announcement posted Wednesday on the Federal Register, the DEA announced that the drug Syndros, a liquid form of synthetic THC, will be classified as a Schedule II controlled substance, meaning it can be legally prescribed by doctors. Meanwhile, regular marijuana will continue to be listed alongside heroin in the more restrictive Schedule 1 category, which, was re which is reserved for drugs that have no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. There you go. <laughs> that's that's, that's the, their story. That's why when you... Uh, the, uh, this is what they want to prescribe to you. Most. 
Did you go away? <laughs> I'm here. All right. This, that's why. That's why this is what they want you to do, to to use is something that they can synthesize and produce in a lab and make billions of dollars off of, rather than something that you can grow in your yard. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. We should be able to, like, to me, recreational marijuana means you're able to grow your own. Right. Well, even medical. You know? Even medical, too. Right. You, you, you should be able to grow your fucking own. It's a fucking plant. It's just like a goddamn fucking violet or a goddamn spider plant. You know, except the difference is, is that it produces buzz. It makes you feel really good. It's really good for you. You know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's and good it's for illness. But, but this, the more concentrated it is, the, the more important it is in curing illness. That's this, why the oil works the best for curing illness. Right. But this it's more concentrated. That this is their story, and and this is what they're they're sticking with. There is you want you can only use something if Big Pharma's uh, approved it. Yeah, fuck Big Pharma. Which, you know, it's the FDA, DEA. Fuck them. You know, you know they'd USDA. rather, like they said, with this company that this is my friend or who the guy I know works for, he's, they'd rather have him be on narcotics so they don't test for that. You know, instead of having him be on something that's not addictive and helpful, you know, it, it's bullshit. That's fucked up. If I was that guy, I'd be like, you know what? I'd be like, I got this prescription from a doctor. I need this for my pain. I don't want to be a drug addict. I don't want to be on, hooked on narcotics. So I'm going to fucking do this. That means I have to fucking quit working here? Fine. But if you want me to keep working here, then you'll fucking give me an exemption for this fucking goddamn stupid drug testing. You know? Why don't you, you start drug, drug testing, every, giving everybody a breathalyzer when they walk in the fucking door in the morning? You know? Because they're not tested for alcohol. No. They're not tested for alcohol, but yet you got all these people coming in hungover half drunk from the night before, you know, it's like, you give them a breathalyzer. If you want to be hardcore about drug testing, you better be having everybody breathe in the breathalyzer before they walk, punch in. Yeah. You know? I worked at a casino. There was one dealer, everybody knew, he'd come to work drunk. We all knew it. Yeah. You know? Well, he came to work fucking drunk. So what's that? He's, he's at a casino. So what? Blackjack dealer. So, so what? <laughs> Blackjack dealer coming to work drunk, though? You gotta, you know, oh, you're gonna give it the wrong payout to somebody, you know, make yeah. the casino lose money because you're so fucking drunk, you don't know what the fuck you're, you know, you're even fucking doing. Right. Well. You know, but I mean, I, I'm just saying, it just drug testing to me is ninety percent to test for weed. Absolutely. Because cocaine goes out of your system. You can co do cocaine on a Friday night. And go in on a Monday to a drug test, and that cocaine will not show up. You know? Yeah. And they don't test for, like, big pharma drugs, opioids, or narc other narcotics that have been prescribed, right? Sure. The ones that you're not supposed to operate machinery on. Well, how can you work in a factory if you're on something that says do not operate machinery? You know? They don't test for that shit. That's my bitch about drug testing, one of them. The other one is it's fucking against your fucking right. No business or company has any business in your business. What you do. If you go to work, show up to work every fucking day, you do your fucking job, no problems, no issues, then there shouldn't be a problem. You know? Right, right. You show up to work and you don't do your job, you get fired, right? Sure, sure. I mean, that's what happens. That's the way it goes. Yep. Right. So, I mean, I don't know, whatever. You know, get out of people's business. They want to be in so. They want to know what you're doing on the weekend. Right. Oh, they, yeah, you can do cocaine, but don't do that weed. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're good doing cocaine because that's all your system by Monday. So you say. But don't the, you wait, dare wait, wait. smoke a fucking joint. So, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? So you're saying they don't, they don't test for opioids, right? So. No. So you could just shoot up heroin all all the time. You could. There's some, okay. There's a different levels of drug testing though. Like for a factory job, they're just testing your pee. If you're gonna go be a pilot, they're give, taking hair samples and shit. And your hair, your a hair sample 
has all the drugs you've done in the last 10 years. So if you're doing a hair sample, so you wait, better be fucking so, clean. So I, so I could, like, smoke my hair? You could probably, <laughs> you would take a lot of it, but, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all the drugs you've done in the last 10 years are in your hair, your hair right. follicles. All right, all right. That's why, like, for some banks and high-powered jobs, they do this, the hair test. You can't deny your past when they do the hair. Like, I, I could not do a hair test. Yeah. I think people tell I've been smoking pot since I was 18. I mean, you know? Right. You know, uh, you can get clean, your piss can get clean in four weeks, but not your fucking hair follicles. Yeah. Not unless you shave your head. Sure. All right, you have to shave your music. fucking head. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, uh, I guess you have to do what you gotta do, you know? Sure, sure. But. All right, let's hear some more music. All right, let's do that. We'll be back. We're we, just, you know, we will. We will be back. Yeah. Um, freaky, or freaky Black Friday. Freaky Black Friday. Yeah, man. Full John. moon last night. Full moon tonight. What are you talking about? Oh, it's tonight? I thought it was last night. I don't know. My calendar says today. I don't know. I didn't know. Okay, well, it's today then. It looks pretty close to full last night, but, okay, right. I believe you. All right. <laughs> John Lee Hooker. Ah, uh, yeah, that's some nice stuff right there, let me tell you. That, uh, not fade away the old uh, Buddy Holly song there. Austin C City Limits celebrating 40 years. Uh, quite the crew they had up there on the stage. All kinds of great people. Uh, Cheryl Crow, Bonnie, uh, Ray, Gary Clark, uh, The Dude, uh, Doyle Bramhall, too. Um, I, I don't know who all was up there, but there was a lot, a lot of people up there on that stage. So, uh, yeah, Buddy Holly living still, still alive uh, after all these years. Before that, we had uh, a little trailer from uh, a movie, the, the Reverend Billy Kalin. Uh, come out with his new movie. Uh, I think it's this year, right? Is that this year? Oh no, that's ten years ago or eight years ago. Uh, what would Jesus buy? Uh, kind of funny. A Kate request there, and we kicked it off with another Kate request. John Lee Hooker in money. That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want silver and gold. I don't want no fucking fiat currency. Silver yet, and gold. Silver. Talking about fiat, you know, fiat. Fuck fiat. I want fucking silver and gold. Silver and gold is money. Okay. <laughs> Are you schooling me now? Uh, no, you know that. This is. Right you you know it as well as anybody. You mean it's real money? It's money. Any well, any fiat currency is not real money, right? Well, right. It's it, it, whatever somebody is willing to accept. That's money. Okay, so, gotcha. So, is Kitco still the place to go to buy silver? Ah, uh, no, no. It's just a place to go to check prices. Where do you? Okay, so where do you go to <laughs> buy silver? Now, like I haven't bought silver for like ten years, so like, um, I'm there's, there's a lot, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of shops out there. You could buy from Atmex if you want, but uh, uh, okay, Atmex. So Atmex is still well. I, I mean, they they don't always, you know, it's not always the best prices out there, but okay, yeah, it's reasonable. Well, it's yeah, but, but I mean, I haven't been to the the the, the coin store for a long time. The right. local one here. So I suppose I can go in there and see if they have any bars. I want a couple of bars, one ounce bars, to give to the boys for Christmas. And I used to have at one point, like ten years ago, when I bought some, I bought some like Christmas ones from like the eighties or something. You know. Right. But now and I, I don't have those. I, I have like I think. They still have two silver each and one copper ounce. But okay. I would like to start that trend again and at least buy them each one ounce of silver this Christmas. All right. Even if, 
it, I'll hang on to it. Like, I'm not going to let them have possession of it just because they could be dumb and just trade it in, you know? But I think I'm just going to start that trend now to try to buy silver as much as I can. Okay. Does that sound like... I mean, I, I know it's an idea, but... I yeah, just, I, I mean, just, you when know... I, when I, in my mind, I'm like... It's, okay. it's, it's way underpriced right now, so, I mean... That would be good then, because in my mind, since the beginning when I became a metal freak and metal fanatic that I am, um, while I was becoming that freak, and that, you know, I, I realized that paper, like I learned this one a long time ago, if you ch hold paper over a, into a campfire, it's going to fucking burn up. It doesn't matter if it's a $100 bill or a $50 bill or a $10 bill or a one or a one dollar bill, right? Right. No matter what's printed on that paper, it's, it's all printed on the same paper. Uh, uh, like, I taught this to my boys at a festival. We were at a festival one time, and I'm like, okay. We were trying to explain, like, actual value of money. Like, you know, you say silver and gold is money, right? Yeah. Sure it is. And so I was trying to teach them that I, I, I put a dollar bill into the fire, and I burned it up. I threw it in there. Right? Okay, okay. I'm like, if you throw a fucking silver coin in here, that thing's not going to burn up from the heat of that campfire. You need thousands of degrees to, burn, to melt silver or gold. Right? And so that was like my lesson. I, I don't know what the mel melting point of silver is. What is it? I don't know you what don't the melting know? point is, no. Well, it's like a thousand degrees. In and and gold would be a lower melting point than silver. Yes, because gold is softer. Yeah. Oh, the silver. I'm going to look it up right now. Anyway, um, my lesson was, you know, if you think about it, the, the hundreds are printed on, the, printed on the same paper as the ones. Sure. And to me, money is something that holds value. And that paper don't hold value. If I can throw it in the fucking fire and it burns up instantly, that's that's that value. Right. You know? And, and uh, Meister Brow is pointing out that I said that when silver was 18, it was way underpriced. It was. It's still, now it's farther more underpriced. Uh, don't ask me right. why, why it's so deeply underpriced, but it certainly is. Um <laughs> Thank you, Chloe, for looking that up before I could. I mean, I, I'm on the show, so it, like, takes me a little bit. So thank you for looking that up quickly. Um, yeah. Appreciate it. But, yeah, it's like I said, it's like a thousand. So it's 1763 is the melting point of silver. Gold is probably less. Uh, sure, but it's, probably 1200. It's a softer metal. Something. Yeah. So it's up there probably in the same. 19, actually, gold tiger grip. Really? 1948. Oh, okay. So it's a harder metal than silver. No, apparently. it's like, not. I, I, no, thought, it's I always not. thought a gold is a soft metal, but apparently it's not. Yeah, no. I I, I guess silver is softer than gold, then. A little bit. Not. It's like 200 degrees. I mean, there's not much difference there, you know. Right. But, interesting. So I learned something tonight. That's always good. I like learning something every day. I try to, you know, I'm, because, you know, you don't learn, even if you live a hundred years old, you're not going to know everything, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're just not, you know, like some people are better at other stuff than others, you know, other people are. That's why we're all different. We're not all the same, like robots, you know, life would be boring if we were all the same. Yeah, it would. It would. It would. It would be totally boring. And it would be, like, mundane. Yeah. You know, when I grew up, I, w I was a kid, typical 70s kid. Um, I was born in 66, so I was four years old, 1970. Right. And, you know, I was a typical... Kid, I was a tomboy, a bit of a tomboy, but 
I grew up watching the Jetsons. <laughs> and we actually thought, at one, you know, I didn't think this for long, but I thought that would be really cool if we could, like, have, like, Roby, you know, sure, robot. Roby Ro- Ro- the robot main. and flying cars. And, and just instant meals. Like, you just, like, push a button. And there's an instant, like, a couple of seconds later, like, instant meal. Sure. Like, it just instantly, like, cooks itself. <laughs> and we, th- I mean, so I'm, a, I'm, like, five years old or six years old or seven watching the Jetsons. You know, I'm like, okay. That would be cool. You know, I wanted to be, like, Judy Jetson. That's what I wanted to be, like. Because, you know, I was, like, pre-teen, probably, you know. Uh-huh. And she was, like, glamorous. She was a teenager. Judy Jetson was the, the daughter. Okay. And she was glamorous. Okay. And she had cool clothes. Cool clothes. <laughs> so, and then uh, they right. had Rosie. That, like, then they had that robo-dog, too. Remember the robo-dog? He wasn't a robot dog. He was a normal was dog. Was he a real dog? I yeah. thought it was a well, robot dog. I mean, he was a real cartoon well, dog. What? Astro. 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 Astro was a robo dog. No, he was not. Yeah, I think he was. No, Astro was real. Yeah, I'm going to look it up. Don't you I'm remember, remember up. old. At, at the beginning of every show, they showed George out there on the treadmill with Astro. And oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. You could be right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Astro was a regular dog. A regular cartoon dog. Yep. No, good memory, Graham. Good memory. You see, you're a little bit older than me, so you were older when you first started watching Jetson. Yeah. You know, in my defense, I was probably like six. You were probably like ten. Yep. You know, I mean, so you know, you understood it a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, is this really? A, I've heard a rumor that guys actually were attracted to Rosie. I mean, I know they were attracted sure. to Judy. But I've heard like weird people like, oh yeah, I liked Rosie. What, 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 what was what was the mom's name? Oh, uh, what was her name? Shit, it's like the mom, Jane. Jane, yeah. Jane. She, she was Jane. okay too. Jane, yeah, she was cute, very cute. Yeah. <laughs> for, for a cartoon, yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> she was fine. <laughs> Right. Oh man. Oh, but I related to Judy because I looked up to Judy because I was like preteen, you know, or like eight or six, you know what I mean? Uh huh. Whatever the fuck I was, and it's like, yeah, you know. And I watched a lot of Leave It to Beaver reruns and my three sons. Oh God. <laughs> we used to do replays of them. Yeah, <laughs> I know the old black and white. It's like and the honeymooners. I mean, a lot of people in this chat room even don't even. Never seen the honeymooners, probably. I mean, that was good shit. Even today, the honeymooners is fucking funny. I mean, if you've never seen Ralph Cramden, Jackie Gleason in action, you guys need to check out some of his shit. It's One really of these funny. Days, Alice. And Art Norton, the his sidekick. <laughs> oh my, Art Carney, Norton in the show. Um, yeah, and then even the women. The women in that show are awesome. The women have such good lines in there. And it's weird because it's like during the 50s, right? Uh huh. And the women, it was a really groundbreaking show for its time, actually, if you, you know, if you can believe that. But you remember watching the Honeymoon Movies, right, Graham? I only saw it a few times. It was before, oh, my, God. It, it was, it was before my time, and I, it's I didn't know. It's all lame, and it's black and white, but you guys, I mean, it just, it, it's, to me, it's, like, historical, because it, I, I, so I remember the mentality of people during that time, the late I, 40s or the 50s, you know? I, 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 what I, remember, I remember Eddie Murphy's um, spoof on the Honeymooners. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh, That's yeah. really funny. I haven't seen that for a he, long he was, time. He was, he was so funny. He was a funny guy, man. Oh God, it's hilarious. But you you gotta see the original. I mean, if if you guys have never seen any of the episodes of the Honeymooners, I would highly recommend watching some of those because they're just hilarious. I mean, they're funny. Art Art Art, Art Carney or whatever the mm-hmm. sidekick Jackie. Yeah. He's a, he's funny as hell. And the women are, like, so, like, 
they're not supposed to show emotion. Like, Ralph's wife isn't supposed, she's supposed to be, like, the fucking strict, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I'm mean, saying? Yeah. Because the, the, him and, you know, the premise is that they live in New York City during the fucking late, you know, right after World War II or whatever. And they're not rich because they live in an apartment. He's a bus driver. And they have these crazy neighbors because they live in, like, a walk-up. They call them walk-ups. That's what they call them apartments. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. And so it's just, it brings you back in time. Plus, it's really fucking funny, you know? So I don't want to get off too often on a tangent on that, but I would just say, if you've never seen Honeymooners, you should watch some episodes. Oh, yeah, okay. Elroy was the son, Meister Growl, Jetsons. Oh. <laughs> All right, let me ask you a question here, because I came across this uh, thing. Now, I'm not sure who Dr. Axe is, Yeah. but apparently he has a site here. Um, you ever heard of Diatomaceous Earth? Yes, I have. And you know what it's for? Yes, I do. All right. Well, he's got this article here. Uh, six six proven diatomaceous earth uses and benefits. And they're saying you're supposed to drink this shit. And I'm like, I've never done that, Graham. And I don't know if I want to do it, you know. Um, yeah, I don't either. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. Can, I'll just give you the, the bullet points here. It says detoxes the body. Yep. Um Killing parasites and viruses and all kinds of other stuff, and right. um, it helps purify water, so you could use it for that. Fights parasites, kills insects and other harmful substances in your home, uh, improves joint, bone, and ligaments health, and helps clean and protect skin, nails, and teeth. No, I'm sure. It's good for you. It is. Good. I've heard people say it's good for you, and it's good for like pest control. It's good to put in your gardens and everything. See, and that's that's uh, kind of confusing. Well, if it kills bugs, and then it's supposed to be good right. for you. <laughs> it 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 it, it seems nasty, and I'm okay. sure it doesn't yeah. taste good. Like if you put it in a glass and mix it uh, up and it, drink it, it like it does, here's the it's deal. It's not going to taste good at all. It's going to taste nasty. Here's, here's the deal. It says, diatomaceous earth is a natural product made yep. up of fossilized remains of tiny aquatic organisms organisms yep. called diatoms, yep. uh, composed of the cell walls, shells of the single cell diatoms yep. that easily crumbles into a fine powder. In yep. fact, the composition of diatom cell walls are biogenic silica. Yep, like sand. Silica means like sand like. Not necessarily that it's sand, but it's sand like. It's that consistency. So, anyway, I guess it gives it improved digestion and more regular bowel movements. It better. does do that. It does. I've heard that people use this and it does work. But better, I'm, I'm too chicken to try it. I better mean, liver and colon function. Right, uh, but it, it's supposed to be. It, oh, but here's, it, this, is a huge, this is a huge one. Uh, detoxification and removal of heavy metals. Yes, that's huge. That's what we all need. We all need that. Yeah. So. We all need that. Yeah, and so I would. Stronger I, bones. I, I'll try it. I'll try it, Grim. I just need some kind of flavoring in it because I won't be able to fucking drink it down unless it's like I put some flavoring in there or something, you know? It says, it's, uh, it's, strong, okay. stronger bones and help from uh, osteoporosis, which. I think is a, a deal for for women. That yeah, they, they have to, big um, time and men, but more more for women. Yep. Men can get osteoporosis too. It just affects women more. Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like osteoporosis. it sounds like something uh, improved joint and ligament, uh, improved energy. Um, right. It. I. I. You know. And for dogs, if, gonna, if you try it, I'll try it. For for dogs and cats, uh, cleaner skin and flea control. If you do it, I'll do it, Graham. Uh, we'll see how, uh, Should we try it? Should we try uh, it? Yeah, like, wh let's, why let's not? Let's do a test. Let's, this would be the first ever time I think it's probably did anything like that. I yeah. think we should do it. Uh, but, uh, but I think it'd be uh, non... non uh, it wouldn't be... Um, I mean, you can't really tell too much. No, I, I you'd mean, be able to tell. If, if it's supposed to be that beneficial to you, because, you, you, like they said, it helps with your ball movements and everything. 
obviously you're gonna know if you're shitting more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm just saying, as an experiment, we could maybe try it both of us together, start the same day. All right. Well, I have to figure out where. See if it like helps. You know. I mean, we're at the age where we need to start doing stuff like this. I have to figure out where to get this stuff and how much it is. And it's, you can get it at any very, it's very readily accessible. Okay. You can get it a lot of places. So I, 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 I do like the heavy metal detox part. I do, too. I, that that part intrigues me the most. Out of every, you know, besides all the other stuff you said, you know. Yeah. That part is important because, yeah, I yeah. hear you. There. All right, we're going to play our last set here. Hey, let's do a challenge. Like, Grim and I are going to do this, and we'll let you guys know we're going to start doing it, and, like, we'll let you guys know, like, we up to the point, like, we'll get the product, and then you guys, some of you guys, if you want to join us, you can join us. Yeah. It's the same day we do. Right. You know, it doesn't have to be just me and Grim. It can be, like, a group thing. Right, everybody. Know? Everybody can do it. Yeah, let's yeah. try that. All right. I mean, it, it, it's a voluntary thing, you know. No, no doubt. Anyway, let's play. That, let's, we got to do our last set here. All right, let's do that. So uh, we'll be back after this. Okay. Rock on, kitties. Rock on. All. Oh yeah, she is shaking that thing. Black Betty Ram Jam. Um, before that, we had Jen Wigmore doing Devil in Me. Uh, I can't really figure out what to make of that girl, but uh, interesting stuff. Anyway, uh, we kicked, before that was the Interrupters uh, for Kate uh, with American Idiot. And we kicked it off with ACDC and Walk All Over You. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know it. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for tuning in. It's been a fun time. Uh, hope you yes, didn't. You. Uh, hope you didn't spend too much on the Black Friday. And, I spent uh, nothing on Black Friday. That's thank good. You. That's thank a good amount. Much. Zero is a good amount. And, yes, I uh, spent zero on Black Friday. All right. So cool. Uh, anyway, tomorrow you got the Flash at um, noon Eastern with the mm -hmm. Dark Table. I'll be on Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues. And we'll be playing some trivia here in the chat. And then you at 3 p.m. Eastern, we'll be Hal Anthony behind the woodshed opening up the big old can of oh, whoop ass. Yes. Then on Tuesday, you got Flash once again, only this time at 1 p.m. Eastern, doing Right. In a Perfect World. Which, and it doesn't exist. You know, that, that, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's the point. I, that's I, I the point. Tell, it, tell Flash that. You know, no, that's the point of the show. Of course I, I it doesn't. I think that's the point of the show. I get it. All right. So, all right. Don't worry. I'm not going to fucking do anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then on Wednesday and Friday, of course, you got Grammy Mary uh, yep. in her rocket chair at 7 you know p.m. Eastern. In the rocket chair. And we'll be back uh, same bad time, same bad channel next week. You know it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Tell your friends. <laughs> yeah, tell your friends to listen to two crazy people. Yeah. All um, right. Freaky, crazy, freaky people. I right, love y'all. Peace. Uh, peace.